your holodeck mission is not done before uh, dailies reset in, what's this, three and a half hours? Three hours and four minutes. You got three hours and four minutes to do your holodeck mission. Uh, we are people too. Otherwise, if that's not completed, you will not have unlocked the Borg store, and therefore you will not see the daily, and you're going to have to wait another day, and now you'll be another day further behind people. Brian, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome on in. Which holodeck mission? I, th I think it's called We Are People 2. I think it's what it's called. You have to be Ops Level 38 to unlock it. That's where the new trigger is. That's where everybody's stuck to get to the Borg Faction Store. But if you do get to that new Borg Faction Store... TC, thank you very much for renewing the subscription there. Twitch Prime, awesome. You push hard for three months to get to Ops 36, thinking you can sit and catch up on research for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, like... We were saying at the beginning of the show, they don't want people sitting and catching up on anything. They want you just to keep chugging forward. They want to keep shoving everybody forward because they need to get everybody to 39 and higher before they release G5, G6 content, which my gut is telling me is coming this summer. It's telling me, it's screaming that everything they've done over the last six months is because their six-month-ahead goal is to release G6, and they need players in their 40s before they move the level cap because the PvP ranges. Level 60 players can only hit down to 39. But All right. We're going to take two crews here. There's a drastic difference in the power level of these things. Tal is your number one answer for how to kill these freebooters. These free, I'm going to call them freeloaders. That's really what I want to call them. Uh, you know what? We'll do it two ways. We'll do it this way first. This will probably not go well. All right. So we're going to go here. And we're going to go here. The warp ranges on these systems are actually not that bad. Uh, this is a level 50 system that I can get to with my warp, what's this, 85 faction mining. So these actually aren't that bad. G3s or low G4s, you know, might have a shot at getting to some of these. I forget exactly what they are, but let's, we can switch to like a crappy ship so I can see what they are. I don't think my Rialta is going to make it. It can make it to Benajat at warp 31. Warp 49, okay. 49 for these first level ones, that's not bad at all. And then to get out here to the next ring to the higher level ones, well, now you need 160. But again, not that bad. That's, you know, a, a low tier G4 rare or like a tier 5, tier 6 Valdor. Like a tier 5, I think probably would get here. Or Valdor probably be able to get out to all these so not a bad thing to catch up on better to wait a bit and miss some early content than push too far too fast yeah. that is definitely uh, one way to look at it I mean this is a game you have to feel comfortable with the time and the money that you can invest into it and to move along at your own pace you know, don't let that fear of missing out dictate how you play or how you move up. You know, this stuff will still be there. You will still have time to catch up and enjoy it. And the day one rewards, as we looked at in the events, aren't all that stellar. You know, if you're rushing to get the Borg faction unlocked and start doing this research, you're just getting a little bit of Syndicate XP. That's like one... This is like one day of a Mantis refinery and some away team speed ups. It's not that big, not that big of a improvement. And as far as the, whenever it stops being laggy.
as far as the mess hall upgrades and stuff go too. What's the leaderboard for this? This one's got some pike shards. I mean, if how high are you really going to place in this particular event? That you'd want to pay to level it up for an officer that you already have fairly decent sourcing with the Mantis Refinery. So, all right, so here's the deal with these guys. So we've got Pike Moreau Chen. We're going to go head on. Oh, that one's damaged. That'd be too easy. This one's damaged too. Are there any that are actually real? Hey, there's one. So these things have the huge bonus to piercing, so they're going to negate a lot of your mitigation. Their crit chance is very low. It's very unlikely they're going to crit you over the course of the fight, but they have decent damage, and they have good penetration already, and then they're getting a huge boost on top of that. So uh, it's the hull health there that's going to make the fight go a lot of rounds, and they are going to do some serious shots to you. I believe they also have a variety of weapons. So like Pike Moro Chen, not exactly the best for doing it. So took a lot of shield health, not a lot of hull health. If we take a quick peek at the old battle log, we can see so, mix of weapons, so they're doing 60,000 damage with the first couple shots. Those must be kinetic weapons. And then it switches over, and these are a whole bunch of energy weapons. That's a lot of shots. Uh, if I didn't have Chen, that probably would have hurt. Uh, but you can see the fight goes 58 rounds. It's a very long fight. Thankfully, they're not putting out a whole lot of damage, but they do shoot a lot. It's three... You're getting off, th this is every round, too. This isn't like they're charging or recharging. This is every round is three kinetic weapons and, you know, a whole bunch, seven, eight energy weapons. It's a lot of shots. Now, I find that I can use Pike Moreau Chen if I'm hitting things that are, you know, around my basic ship level. So I've got a 45. This is a 42 uncommon ship. If I'm hitting 45s, they hold up okay. If I can find a 48 Explorer, of course there aren't any. Oh, there's one. If I can find a 48 Explorer, this one's going to hurt a lot more. They're mostly kinetics. It didn't look that way when I was just looking at this. Uh, this is just Pike Moreau Chen. Yeah, see, it took a lot more damage that time hitting up, you know, above the pay grade of my ship. If you're kind of hitting at where you're supposed to be, you know, it's a 42 ship. If I'm hitting 42s, they do fine. If I'm hitting 45s, you're okay. When, you, when I go up to 48s, you kind of take a bit of a whooping. Now they're hitting, they got those three big kinetic shots, and then, again, doing a lot more damage. And because the hull health has gone up so much between the 45s and the 48s, that fight went from 58 rounds to 76 rounds. It's 20 more rounds of damage I'm getting pelted on. It's a lot more hull health I'm taking here. Conversely, if you did invest in Tal... You know the fight ain't going more than 20 rounds. Unless Giorgio doesn't proc, it realistically shouldn't go more than 17. Unless you don't, unless you miss a Giorgio proc. And again, using a 46 rare hitting 50s goes fairly well for me. So here's 5 Tal Giorgio, which is seeming like it's going to be the best crew. I know Tal's only for sale, and he's not for sale right now, so this doesn't help. You kind of needed to. I guess, read the writing on the wall last week or two weeks ago, which is, why are they bringing this officer back? They had three years to fix him. Why did they suddenly fix him right now? Because he's probably going to be the answer to your problem next month. 
I know, a little too late. I'm sure he'll be back for sale again later this month. But as you can see, that fight only went 15 rounds. So even though I'm not, I'm still getting pounded by the damage and my mitigation is terrible. My mitigation is 29.73%. Thanks to 5 of 11 and his little bonus. Don't have a lot of officer slots really to boost that. And, you know, because Tal's tier 1, he's also doesn't have a lot of health. And I think Giorgio's, well, she's fairly well up there. Um, I could probably squeeze better health officers below deck and get a little better out of that. But if I start going up a little bit, they start to hurt a little more. Even with this particular crew. You look at hitting a 50. Oh, hang on. So I started at 17 and a quarter. I lost about two and a half million hull health on that particular fight. So now we're at 14.62. And this particular fight here, I lost almost eh, about two and a half again. So that wasn't, again, too, too bad. This fight did go, also only went 15 rounds. So they're shooting a little bit harder, but Tal's doing all the work. So the fight is still being ended fairly quickly. And if now we go hit a 52, And again, I take a bunch of damage. But I do manage to get the kill done. And again, it should be about the same 17 rounds this time around to get the 52s done. I haven't tried to go up any higher than this because realistically speaking, I won't need to to do my dailies. But since we're all here, let's go find out what a 53 looks like. Denver's looking them up on stfc.space and says that the kinetic ones do more damage. The kinetic weapons do do more damage, but Talon also reduces less of that damage because she's weaker. So I don't know if it's uh, where the where the the offset lies in. It's like if I lower. these first three weapons by 74%, which I think is what her bonus is with PMC or, P or Pike Moreau. If I lower these three by 74%, now I get shot seven or eight more times at max damage. So, or do I let these three go through and lower these by what is Chen to something like 90% of reduction or something like that, 92%. Uh, it's a much bigger reduction that she has. If you're fighting the interceptors, which I think I was doing earlier, before I was doing all these things. Let's see if I can find one from what I was doing this morning. I was doing them in Borg. Freebooter battleships. That was with them. So here's where I was doing Picard, Beverly, and Talon going against one of the interceptors. He lowered their first three big hits to 30,000 apiece. But then here's all these other hits that I'm getting pelted with at 60 and 70,000 apiece. So it would seem like you would take a lot more damage with, with Talon. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's got to be 600,000 damage. And those three shots, so even though sh this weapon may hit a little bit harder. Chen is still better than Talon, in my opinion. So...
Oh, the Stranger Worlds crew, I'm sure, will work better. Because, again, it's mixed weapons. And that's what we're going to roll out next year once we finish repairing. But if we go up a little bit, here's a 53. Let's see what that... Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, the 52 is 98 million strength. The 53 is 299 million strength. Now, I still beat it anyway. <laughs> because Tal did all the work. Tal did all the work in this fight. It's a huge power jump. We're talking about 98 million here. 31 million hull health. Doing 2.1 million damage per round on the level 52. You go up a, a whole new system, and now you're hitting 53s. And now we're talking about... It's, actually, it's the same damage. 2.35 million per round. Hull health. That can't be right. Okay, hull health, 575 million. I was reading the wrong line. I was reading the wrong line. My apologies. All right, so this one had 174 million hull health. This one had 570 million hull health. So it's a huge, huge difference. Yeah, 400 million more hull health between a 52 and a 53, and a 200 million power increase as a result of that additional hull health. The damage per round is about the same, so they're not really hitting all that much harder. 130, 150 not really hitting all that much harder this time around than what these guys were hitting at 52 120 again 120 150 in that same wheelhouse but 400 million more hull health to chew through is a big ask if you don't have tal but then again if you're going up against these, you're probably using a G5 ship, because that would be the only reason you would need to come in here and kill these, is if you're trying to do your G5 dailies, which would require you to hit 50+. Plus. And that's why they have the huge power increase. GP, you just went 14 rounds with a 53 battleship. Was that using, which crew were you using when you did that? You were on your pylum. Which is what I was just using. And you used Yuki, Tal, and Giorgio. And your fight went 15 rounds, you said? I used 5 of 11 Tal and Giorgio, and I went 19 rounds. Okay, so maybe Yuki sped it up a little bit there. I guess that's the thing, too, is how much, you know, there's a minimum to mitigation, right? It can't go below, like, 20, 21% or something like that, 20%. So what am I mitigating here? I'm mitigating 26%. So if I lose an extra 5 or 6% of mitigation, but Yuki does a shield strip and helps win the fight faster, that could certainly be helpful. Could certainly be helpful. Have I tried Gorkon, Kurla, and Khan? No, I have not uh, tried that crew out. Genius. Gorkon and Khan... You know, five Gorkon Khan was another crew that I know people were using and testing out and were having decent results with. If you have to, you know, if you don't have Tal, Tal's the answer, right? Tal's number one. If you don't have Tal and you're looking at number two and number three crews, you know, Pike Moro Chen might get the job done, but it's a bit of a problem. We're going to switch ships here in a minute. We're going to try Strange New Worlds crew and just see what we get off those guys. So if we're using this, we're going after interceptors, then I would still want Spock there. And then if 
I want full synergy. Spock is based on defense. I feel like those guys are pretty good on defense. Can I get more defense that way? Yeah, we can get a little more defense out that way. All right, so let's do that. And let's go back out here and let's go hit some... What were we hitting? We were hitting 48s. Let's go ahead to start here and do the 45s. See where we go. Is Curly really, Curly really even doing anything with all the inflation? Probably not a whole lot. Let's just look at the group real quick while we're flying out there. So Curla, in addition to giving, if you know, if Gorkon's captain, he's giving him a little extra synergy. Increases critical hit damage by 50% when firing with a kinetic weapon. So you're getting a bigger damage boost to your critical hit chance. He's going to add a little bit of extra damage to it. You've got him increasing your critical hit chance for the first two rounds. You're going to get a little synergy. It's going to give you a little bit more of a boost. You're going to start off with a little bit better punching power and then more likely to get that hull breach going. That'll give Khan time to take a few hits to get the crit chance up, so then the rest of it, you know, rounds five to whatever it takes. End up doing uh, a lot more damage there. Stranger Worlds requires Hugh under deck. I don't have Hugh, so that's how we're going to find out what happens without it. I know a lot of people don't have Hugh. Unfortunately, the sourcing for Mr. Hugh being tied to the Borg refinery chests has kind of limited people and their ability to get and unlock him with him being stuck in this epic box that you're essentially limited to, like, you know, one or two pull, a couple pulls a month because of how the sourcing and the other exchanges goes. And then it's random how many shards you get, if any. Because there's like seven other officers in that pool. Alright. So, we'll go whack a 45 and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, Odo and Hugh under deck would be a pretty good alternative as well. So, that actually went fairly well. Again, we're punching down. I'm using... A medium, you know, a good size. This is a tier six Val door. I'm hitting 45s. That's kind of about where you should be. Dumped a lot of it into the shields thanks to, you know, this is, I think Pike is tier three and Spock might be maxed now. Fight went 32 rounds, but you'll notice because of Spock, I'm mitigating a lot more of the damage. With five of 11, I was mitigating what, like 26%. Oops. I'm at max mitigation here, 71%. But again, this is having 1,800% because my Spock is maxed. So taking a lot less damage here, for sure. And I'm doing full synergy on this. Uh, Pike is, I think Pike's tier 3. So he's decreasing their shield mitigation by 20% as well. So I'm getting a better damage output. But if we try and punch up, last time this did not go so well. But let's see what happens with the Strange New World screw going up against a 48. We're punching up now. That still seemed to go pretty well. So Strange New World screw, if, caveat if, you have tier 4, tier 5 of your particular mitigation officer. Seems like it's going to be pretty good. Now let me try with one of the ones who isn't maxed out. Because one of my guys is still tier 4, I think. Actually, as long as I'm right there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop. Let's go up one further.
Denver, you don't have towel. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I just proved that right there, right? You know, Strange New World's crew worked fine hitting 45s and 48s. We're going to go up even further, and we're going to try 50s. But let's just take a look at this group and see exactly what I'm working with here. Uh, so we've got Tier 3 Pike still. He's, he's almost Tier 4. Uh, Spock is maxed. Uhura is maxed. Ortegas is not. So I'll try using her next on a battleship. Ooh, that's really going to be off because I don't, I don't have a G4 battleship. So let's find out what a G3 battleship can do. <laughs> let's find out what the auger can do, shall we? All right, but now we're punching up. Let's go find an interceptor here. And again, this is a system bigger. And let's see how much more damage this goes. And again, maybe this is just a bigger incentive to focus on that Mantis refinery. And, and I died. So <laughs> punching up, going after the 51s. I died. I took a big chunk of hell off that guy. We're not quite getting max mitigation anymore. No, we still are. Eh, 71%. We're still getting 71% mitigation. The fight just went too long. They just have too much hull health. The fight went 62 rounds. As compared to the 48s, where the fight went 42 rounds. So, just too much extra hull health to get through to punch up that far. So you can kind of go up one notch, but you can't really jump up two notches. Yeah, I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hugh would obviously be a big bonus to that, of course. If you, if you could source a particular officer and then boost your crit rate, you would get the additional damage output you needed to kind of make that fight go faster. But I've got a, quite a ways to go here. Increasing your critical hit chance by 25% for two rounds, which could stack, which could make you pop off a lot more criticals and put out a lot more damage for sure. I need 44 more Hue shards. I'm actually closer to getting the Borg Queen than I am to unlocking Hue. How much fun is that? And I'm slightly further away from Odo. <laughs> And there's been two extra months to source him. <sighs> All right. But we're going to try. I mean, that kind of just showcases the same example there, right? You can't really punch up. Now, if you needed to, for some reason, your Ops 38, you don't have a G4 ship yet. And you're looking at, you know, a mid-ranged officer here like Ortegas. Uh, she's off of health. Okay, let's put some health below decks. Let's swap Charvanek in there. Let's flip that around. There's a big health boost. Eh, just because we're goofing around. Let's throw Khan there as well. Okay, so we got plenty of hull. Hull health and health bonus. Realistically, for my dailies, I should only... If I were a level 38 player... And this was the crew I had to use, and I had to use a G3 epic ship. Maybe I've only got a Tier 3 or Tier 4 person for a Strange New Worlds crew. I don't have Hugh or any of those other, or Tal or any of those other specialty officers to use. Could I still get this done? Now, at Tier 3, you're probably not going to have a maxed out G3 epic at, uh, at 38 or 39, but you might. Or at least have it to be like Tier 7 or something like that. It'd be fairly strong, but no, you're not going to have a 9 million auger, but I'm sorry, I don't have one that's not this far along. I'm going to, you know what, I'll just build a second one right now and we'll just level, <laughs> we'll just level it up and find out what happens. Yeah. GP's going to try and punch up to 55s, okay. 
Lloyd, the officer you want is the new Beverly. Her officer ability is what's needed for these free, not free loaders. We haven't even looked at the new officers yet. So you got the new Picard. Captain's ability gives you morale against player ships, making him a new PvP officer. Which seems weird that they would give you a new officer that boosts your PvP morale chances at the same time they fix Wayoon. We're, we're, we're two departments not talking to each other again. And he, again, is a PvP boost against a player explorer. So it boosts your weapon damage when you're fighting other people using explorers. But the dancing doctor over here. No captain's ability. Officer ability. Every time the ship gets hit by a weapon attack, Beverly increases your critical damage by 3% is what it starts at. This ability stacks infinitely. And as we just saw from the battle logs, these things shoot like 9 or 10 times a round. So if you just do, we'll call it 10 you get a 30% bonus each round to what your critical hit damage output would be. Now you just got to make sure you can get some criticals. So if you had Hugh below deck, giving you a huge bonus to your critical hit chance, this would be a great ability. If you had, you know, Strange New Worlds Pike and Khan or something like that, kind of trying to lower their mitigation a little bit or you know even if it's not strange new world pike if it's just the officer like spock khan and beverly so you've got the mitigation bonus you've got khan doing the criticals and now you've got her giving you the extra damage that might be an interesting crew to try play around with it in uh i don't know a week or two whenever we unlock her probably two weeks let's see what we can get Definitely seems like there's some possibilities there. Some more flexibilities other than just, well, if you don't have tall, you're screwed. Because that's not that's not accurate. There are ways around this stuff. There are. Brain soup, thank you very much for the hydrate. Alright, so. We took almost no damage punching down against a level 40. By the way, these things do drop 4-star uncommon ship parts, or scrappy ship parts. So you might get a little bit of extra ship parts for your refineries and stuff. The 43 here, again, did virtually no damage. Took a lot of the shields down, but again, with Pike dumping more of the damage into the shields. The shields did stay up barely through the whole fight. And the fight went 39 rounds. Uh, but with Ortegas, we're still getting really high mitigation value. Still at 70% with her not being maxed at tier 4. So we're still getting some pretty good value there. And if I go up one notch, now again, this is where we get into the tricky part. Where now you're punching up above where this ship should be, where its weight class should let it go. You know, this is the system you're ideally supposed to be in doing this stuff with this type of ship. You can manage to get by and hit everything. When you're going into the bigger system, you know, you're swimming into the, you've left the, the baby pool, and now you're moving into the regular people pool. How much there is a big step up in difference between the power levels of the ships. Good officers can overcome that, but some of these officers are really hard to source, so... Olympus says he just realized there are no 39 freebooters, which coincidentally is what you'd need to kill if you were at the 10 million lock in your factions. That's true. You would have to kill 38s and 39s for your dailies. 
So instead, you'd have to kill the 40s. You'd have to kill level 40 hostiles to do your dailies instead. Alright, let's go slap a 45 and see what happens. Basically killed me. Again, punching up a full... You're going up a full weight class, right? And that's kind of what I've seen all day. Different systems, different ships, different crew combinations. You can get the job done against the ones you're supposed to. You can move up, you know, slightly higher within the same system. But you can't really take that class of ship to the next system and get the job done. So if you push yourself up too far to the point where you have to do that, you're just going to be making a lot of trips. Maybe you get one kill per hull, and you just got to fly back and forth six times. Probably still faster than doing your dailies. If you're doing 13 dailies at the same time, you can probably do that, fly back and forth, and die six times faster than you can fly your Franklin all the way out to swarm space. Thank you, Dragonfly. If you put Khan in, we could try that. Improve the damage output. Khan seems like he'd be an important officer to really boost your damage output for sure. Now you're going to lose a little bit here. It will slow. You're going to take more damage to your hull earlier. Less of it's going to be offset by the shields in the early rounds, but eventually at some point you do run out of shields, right? So let's flip them. We'll try that one more time. Just to showcase for all our G3 friends what the possibilities still are. Because this fight went 58 rounds. And I know at some point in time I have to be out of shields. Let's just find out where the shields went down. There we go. The shields dropped in round 29. The last shot in round 29, they got my shields. So I went basically half the fight with no shields. And if we're going half the fight with no shields, well, maybe we'll do some more damage in the meantime. Ace used Pike Moreau Chen with Hugh and Odo on his 9.3 million Val door. So that's probably like tier 3 ish. And you were able to kill a level 48 freebooter. Yeah, the ones within the same system, there's not a whole lot of difference between them. It's when you change systems that you see the big jumps. But awesome, good to hear. Now you know you've got some wiggle room. Once you get those researches done and things like that, you can feel free to start moving your ops up because now you know you don't have to kill the individual targets. You don't have to upgrade all those individual specialty ships. You can just take your one best ship and go back to killing a handful of half a dozen of these guys and call it a day. And then, you know, You'll stop getting the swarm parts for doing your, your your swarm dailies. But how much were these guys really dropping anyway? Not much. You know, if I came out here and I had to kill 49s for my daily, which is where I'm at now, how many parts are these guys dropping? A thousand. I kill nine of these guys, so that's 10,000 parts. That's not where I'm getting the parts to upgrade my Franklin from. I'm getting the parts from the mission, from the events, from the daily. You know, if you're a grinding fed Klingon Romulan rep and you're out here uh, even killing the highest ones, I'm getting 25,000 points per kill, killing level 50 miners. 
if you need millions and millions of points to your reputation, you're not getting big chunks of it from doing your daily. You know, 25 kills at 25,000 apiece. What's that, 500k? 525, 625? So that's less than a million from the kills. What you're really getting it from is the dailies. They're giving you 700,000. They're giving you a million points for doing the dailies. So it'll slow it down a little bit, but you can always make that up if you want to. You can always still fly out here and do all the killing that you'd want yourself. All right, so let's switch this up. Let's take off full synergy. Let's take him out. Let's put Khan in there. And she's based on health. Give me somebody with health. You've got a bunch of health. There we go. And let's try this one more time. So the 43s were really no challenge at all. So it was the 45 who punished us. So let's go back to the 45 system and see if maybe this will be a workable solution for the majority of players out there to get the job done. Faction kills for ship parts though? True, but you're getting ship parts from these guys too. These guys drop ship parts, so you are getting a little bit, not as much. But then again, if you're killing miners to do your faction, you're just getting mining ship parts. If you're killing interceptors and explorers, okay, yeah, you're getting some parts off those guys. But you're also getting some parts off these guys. Not as many, but you're getting some. a lot of stuff. You got a new faction, a new hostile grind, a new research tree, and a new building. And this is like the beginning of the arc. We don't even know what they're going to do in month number two. Did they spend it all now? Did they? Is this it? And month number two is like, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. Just, you know, I'm going to take a little nap over here. You guys just, just keep going. We're just going to just Rest my eyes for just a second. <laughs> Freebooters don't throw a lot of criticals. Now, they only have a 5% crit chance. Their, their critical hit was lowered uh, from the standard to make up for the fact that they have an exceptionally high amount of hull. So they are, by definition, low damage, high health. So, let's see if we can find another 45 up here. Here we go. Last time we got messed up pretty bad. We, we went 58 rounds. The fight basically was half with shields, half without shields. But we managed to get it done just barely. Now we're going to focus on, we've got a maxed con here. Again, something a, a, a level 38, 39 player probably won't have yet. But even if your con is like tier 3, tier 4, you should still get a pretty good crit percent bonus. That went a lot better. That went a lot better. That fight only went 26 rounds. We cut the fight in half. Again, 5% crit chance on con. We're still getting decent mitigation off of Ortegas, this is you know close to 70% again. 
did the shields ever actually go down? No, the shields never even got depleted all the way, and we took very little hull health. So she's mitigating a bunch of damage, the shields are absorbing a big chunk of the rest, but more importantly than that, by, we're going to say about round 7 or 8 or so, everything is going to be a critical. Not even that far. Crit, 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 crit. Yeah, comms just... It really is savage tenacity, because these things shoot so many times. And, you know, you wish you had more weapon shots. Because, uh, yeah, by round four, I've been hit so many times that every shot for the rest of the fight is a critical. These are all criticals at this point, and now Khan's just stacking even further, which is just kind of redundant at this point. But these are all criticals. So that punched up to a 45. Since we're here, and we're feeling extra brave, I mean, the hull health to the, the repair bill on an auger ain't that much, so let's go try a 48 and see what happens. Hey, Gruram, welcome on in. Love how Scopely gave us more grinding to reduce grinding. It's a short-term expense for a long-term payoff. <laughs> You'll spend more time in the interim now, or you can jump ahead with just a couple hundred dollars worth of purchases from the store. A hundred to two hundred bucks. It'd be no grinding in no time. Okay, so now we jumped up to a 48, and this one put out a lot more damage. Or the fight just went, the fight went 36 rounds. So that was an extra 8 or 9 rounds that this fight actually went. My shields did get depleted at some point in time. I mean, obviously, I'm still, every shot is a critical after like round 4 or 5. But they also have a lot more hull health, so it's going to take a few more rounds to chew through. And at some point here... I'm going to guess in like round 25 or so. I'm probably going to run out of shields. 15. Uh, I hate when it does that. So let's see. Where do we lose our shields? Right here at the end of round 22. So then we have to go 14 rounds with no shields. And we're just taking a pounding. But again, if my dailies are requiring me to punch up and hit 48s, I've probably got a 42 ship by that point in time, and I'm probably not still using a G3 Epic when my dailies are requiring me to kill 48s. When my dailies are requiring me to kill 42s, I can definitely take it. Even when if I'm trying to work on 45s and I've moved my ops up pretty quickly, maybe I am you know, haven't really leveled up that 42 too far yet. I've invested in my buildings instead. Bug giving out five subs. Thank you very much for that. Gurum, SJ, Brain Soup, Stewie, and Barkman all receiving gifted subs. Thank you so much. You're going to start a hype train all on your own. <laughs> so, yeah, by that point in time, you should be moving on to the next class of ship. So you shouldn't be trying to punch up this far with this ship. And it kind of does keep you within... You know, it's like bowling, right? They keep you within the gutters, from staying out of the gutters. The little gar guards just keeps you right down somewhere in the middle. That's kind of what these systems seem to do. But Strange New Worlds with Khan in the third slot seems like it worked out pretty well. So that may be a low-cost alternative option for a wide variety of players in the interim.
Thank you very much. That ace dropping 100 bits, trying to get, trying to get that hype train going.